Welcome back everyone to Master Game Design, Unreal Engine 5 Stylized Environment and Third Person Blueprint Course. In the last lesson we left ourselves off by creating a nicer detail out of our islands and just setting ourselves up with a bit of a nicer depth towards the ocean itself. Now we're going to continue on with this and actually make sure that we add a nice overlay on what the map will look like. As a starting point we usually create ourselves a gray box and that's a process where you gotta refine it constantly and make sure that it works well in both the artistic style and the game game design kind of way for the player to work it out properly so usually when i started out i prefer to instead of just doing it from scratch and just applying it i prefer to have a nice gray box out and for the sake of this course i'll just show you how to do it and then we'll also have ourselves a nice uh, gray box to add afterwards to just use it as a reference for building sake and before doing that though we also have within the resource pack references folder we also will have a couple of images just as a reference point of view and i will just talk through them in regards to how it was set up in regards to the overall shots so as a starting point when creating the level itself we usually uh, go for the aesthetics first making sure that the view is set up properly so as you can see over here this is the type of a build we're going to create but afterwards we also need to intertwine the game uh, design as well into it so that's usually done uh, just iterating between one and another we try not to do both at once as otherwise it can complicate certain issues in regards to just uh, overwhelming yourself you don't need to do that realistically and yeah as a starting point uh, again you don't need to do this right now because i'll just show you how i would usually start it off and we're going to use uh, an already existing gray box but uh, if we were to start it from scratch i would usually go to selection mode go to use modeling mode modeling toolkit if you're not seeing this type of a tab over here on the top what you'll need to do is basically you need to go to edit uh, plugins and search for modeling modeling so and there you go modeling tools uh, editor mode you need to make sure that this is ticked on and if you do tick it on when it was ticked off you'll just need to restart it on the bottom right hand corner of the window and afterwards you'll get yourself this type of a setup now in actually way to start it off is go would be just to usually uh, grab the modeling toolkit go on to the either primitive shapes over here or path extrude primitive shapes will allow you to just uh, create quick shapes so if you were to select box make sure that the new asset location is set up to auto generate world relative folder so that's going to give us the best type of a setup and as you can see like so we can click and then it's going to give us a box then we can go ahead and click accept and we can just make it larger make it smaller we can play around with these shapes and get ourselves some nicer design we can also grab ourselves some stairs for example if we want to have some elevation and whatnot we can click accept and afterwards we can click play and get our character to just try it out uh, try out the level itself and see how this would work so that's the general premise of this and then finally we would have something like path extrusion this is uh, quite a nice way of using as in if we were to click on it we have points to work with we can click on one point another another and another and once we connect it all we can then extrude it and bring it outwards uh, to create a nice type of a wall just like that the alternative way of doing it is going to be if we want to just make a nice hollow path would be to just go back to modeling and use the uh, draw extrude this is uh, basically the same tool except in this case it's not going to give us the thickness of the walls it's actually just going to if we were to great nice uh, type of design we can just create a quick shape like so hit complete and there you go we're going to get ourselves a nice overall type of a setup so just like that we're able to create shapes and just like that we're able to uh, just 
play around with the overall shapes i'm going to click on this button over here which will allow us to basically go on to four different viewports showing the showing the back side the right side perspective and top points and just like that we're going to make use out of it in order to create ourselves some nicer shapes by default it might look all over the place in regards to where we're see where we're looking so what i tend to do is if i have a nice shape selected i'm just going to select this island over here and then, then i'm going to click f in order to focus the entire view i'm going to click f over here and then you'll see that it brings every viewport to the focus of this island and just like that we can just zoom back in and just start playing around with it I'm going to check where the front is actually real quick. So I'm just going to maybe place a cube over here. Hit accept and see that this is going to be the front of the islands, which is great. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and delete it and show you how I'd usually use the poly extrude tool. So by clicking on poly extrude tool, we can now go on to the top down view and we can just play around with the shapes. We can also just click on a couple of points just like so and create a really nice and simple type of a setup. Once we create the shape like so, you can see that me, I'm dragging it around like uh, like so. You can go, then go to another viewport and just drag out the shape just like that. And then afterwards you hit complete, you go again and create a new shape just like that. And it's a bit hard by default since we're not uh, able to see what kind of a like reference for um, size that we have so what i usually like to do when starting out this uh, type of a design is i'd like to get myself a human reference luckily for us it's actually quite simple to do since we already started off with a third person a blueprint uh, type of a setup within unreal engine and you'll see that we have something called third person folder if we were to go into it we actually should have blueprints or sorry not that if we were to go on to characters folder, so this one over here, within the content section, we're going to get ourselves the mannequins. So let's go ahead and grab one of the meshes. It doesn't really matter which one we use, to be honest. I'm just going to grab the first one out and see how it looks like in regards to the size itself. So I'm just going to grab it, drag and drop it, and you can see just like so, we're going to have ourselves a tiny human scale in comparison to this building. So this in comparison the size for the buildings look quite tiny the human reference is actually quite small in regards to what i just did and yeah that's why in regards to the setting up the buildings just like that it's really useful to have a sort of a scale reference to what we're working with and i'm just going to place it next to the side and again when going to do a type of gray boxing and setting yourselves up afterwards, all we got to do is just, I'm going to click F real quick to just zoom into the main human body like so. And then I'm just going to start working with the overall design. So again, going back to the poly extrude, going to just play around with the shapes. So for example, I want maybe a couple of buildings up on the side, just like that. I'd connect this, drag it outwards, see what kind of height I want. So maybe something like that. And that looks all right. So afterwards I hit uh, complete and we continue on with this type of a setup until we get the type of a look that we want. Again, this is creating simple static meshes, very basic type of stuff. So even when we're done with just building it out like so, we can go ahead and even just duplicate it like so and grab ourselves more of an interesting buildings or even like we can extrude it click r by the way to go into scale mode and just extrude it like so i'm going to go to go back onto the setup and see how this looks like and yeah this by default might not look quite as interesting but it's a crucial point in regards to setting ourselves up with a nice look or when we want to design the overall aesthetics and see how this would look like. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go too much in depth for this section since we already, again, have the gray box, which I'm going to show you how to make use out of in the next lesson. So after we're basically done with the level itself, once you have like a general idea of the gray box that you 
want to have yourself uh, set up with, you'd be then afterwards needed to just set it up as a simple static mesh. And for example, you'd be using something like Blender to create assets for it. So once you have just like a general overall aesthetic, the size of the stairs and whatnot, by the way, in order to change the size of the stairs, what you can do is if you go to here, I totally forgot to mention that you have certain controls over the shape settings itself over the meshes so the box itself would have the width height and depth over here after you select the box so i have the box selected over here and the width height and depth you can see these being uh the options if we were to change it you'd have different options usually i keep them as default but for the stairs though we would need to maybe increase it so for example reach the top of this building so for us to do that we'd need to basically increase some settings so Changing this to 20, 20 steps, we'll get a much larger staircase and changing it to like 25, we'll get it something like so. Click play, we're going to be able to get ourselves a much nicer staircase, which now we can use to get up to this sort of a height. And that's all it is. All of the static meshes that we create get generated into this generator folder. We can see all of them over here. So... Even if we don't create uh, new stairs, we can always just grab the ones that we had and just bring it in already existing ones. So this way we can see which ones of the meshes, for example, would be more or less the same kind of size or like the same kind of stairs. So if we're making a modular piece, an asset type of a pack, we'd know which exact type of meshes we need to uh, just make once, basically. And that's quite nice as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for just creating a nice piece uh, when working with Greybox. I'll talk about how to actually make a nicer uh, visually aesthetic looking piece in the next lesson though. But one more thing I should mention is that uh, after you're done with this, you would need to export it out to another program. So for us to do that, we'd basically save out the level, click Control and Save to save it out. I'm going to go back to selection mode, by the way, since I don't want this tab on the side to be um, just visible. I'm going to go out of it. And um, yeah, we can just simply click or right click on the harbor map. We can click on asset, ash, uh, asset actions and then click export. By doing that, we get ourselves with an FBX file and FBX files can be imported into any type of uh, 3D modeling software basically. And then afterwards you can start uh, actually doing the modeling work since Unreal Engine is a great game engine, real-time render, amazing stuff for that. It has a nice physics and particles engine, but it's not a 3D modeling program. So yeah, that's going to be it for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you.